Uh, this video is about um, position and velocity in physics um, in relation to more than one dimension. Uh, it's key to Young and Friedman's University Physics, and this section is Chapter 3, Section 1, but any physics book is going to get here. So if you go back to Chapter 2 in University Physics, you find basically um, the equations for position and velocity and acceleration in relation to one dimension. That is something move in straight line motion, straight line motion uh, basically going in an x direction or a y direction or a z direction, um, except we don't have to say x, y, z because we're just talking about it as something moving in one dimension. But what happens if we're talking about something that's moving in more than one dimension? Um, now, uh, of course, it's somewhat arbitrary as to uh, where we locate you know, an XYZ framework. Let's say that I'm, I'm standing on the ground and I'm shooting off a rocket. Then I might, it might make sense for me to say, okay, since I'm up and down, I'm going to call the axis on which I'm standing the Y axis. And then you might say, okay, if the, if the ground in relation to me is somewhat horizontal, I'm going to call that the X axis. And if I shoot the rocket somewhat forward, then we might call the front and back the Z axis. But really, as long as these axes are perpendicular to each other, uh, we don't have to do it that way. I mean, we could make we could make this the X axis and this, you know, the Y axis. Um, so th the axes we choose are somewhat uh, arbitrary. Uh, there is no absolute X, Y, Z in space. Einstein has, has helped us out with that uh, and others. But anyway, um, so how we how we frame space is is somewhat arbitrary, but in in this chapter we're going to talk about motion um, that for example it might be straight line but it might be straight line in relation uh, to this three dimensional coordinate frame or a couple sections from now in this chapter we're going to look at projectile motion like the rocket I just mentioned that's going to of course not be in a straight line but go in in somewhat of a parabola. Uh, a curve uh, up and then a curve down. But to start off this chapter, we want to talk a little bit about um, vectors um, and how it works in relation to position and velocity. Um, and we're going to talk about straight line uh, motion in this section. So really, this is just a slightly more complicated version of what we did uh, in the previous chapter. There are videos on vectors um, that I also have uh, from chapter one. Uh, here on YouTube. Okay, so let's talk about uh, position in three dimensions. This, uh, if you remember when we talked about unit vectors in, in chapter one, um, unit vectors are basically placeholders. The i, the j, and the k, they really don't, to me, they don't mean much of anything. They just tell you that when I put a number in front of that i with a hat on it, um, I'm basically saying that uh, the number in front of this i is the x component of, of whatever I'm talking about, whether it be position or velocity or acceleration. The i simply means footnote. This number goes with the x direction. And the j simply means that the number I put in front of it goes with the y direction. And the k with the hat, uh, the caret on top, basically says whatever number I put in front of this k has to do with the z direction. And that number could be um, position, so it could, could be a distance, could be a velocity, could be an acceleration, but the IJK language basically says that um, I'm talking about the components of a position, a velocity, or an acceleration, or whatever. I'm not talking about, uh, they're, they're not a quantity. Um, the I, the J, and the K are not a quantity. They are a direction. They have to do with the direction. So R is the resultant. That is, when I take these components and I put them, I locate them. Let's say I have a treasure hunt. You go five spaces in the x direction, and then two spaces in the y direction, and then five spaces in the z direction. You know, basically I've gone, you know, and it takes me somewhere. And the r is the resultant vector that that would that if I'd have gone straight from where I started to that end destination, that would have been that r vector. Again, this is stuff we talk about in in chapter one. Uh, in, in the video on unit vectors um, and on vectors. So it should be, it's not really that hard. If it, if, it, if it seems hard to you, it's because it hasn't clicked. Once it clicks, this is simple, 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 simple. Uh, it's like a treasure hunt. 
So the average velocity for that resultant, uh, uh, that resultant is uh, a distance, and, and then if it takes a certain amount of time to get there, then the average velocity that it took me to get from my starting point to my ending point is the difference, resultant one, or resultant two minus resultant one, that's the change in distance, divided by the change in time. So R2 minus R1 divided by T2 minus T1. That's going to give me the average uh, velocity. What about the instantaneous velocity? If I want to know the instantaneous velocity, then I have to use a little calculus. So the instantaneous velocity is the limit as delta t approaches zero. That is the limit as the change in time gets smaller and smaller and smaller of delta r delta t. That is the change in displacement uh, divided by the change in time. Uh, we might call this dr dt, the derivative of uh, the resultant uh, per in, in relation to time. So that's the instantaneous uh, velocity. Now we can also write uh, this vectored velocity, this velocity with direction, speed with direction is velocity. We can also write it in terms of vector components. So there's the x component of the velocity, which is the change in x per time, dx dt. Then there's the, the y component of velocity, which is the change in the y direction per time, dy dt. And then the change in velocity in the z direction, vz, is dz dt, uh, the instantaneous rate of change of distance in the z direction per time. Again, if, if this seems hard, you're overthinking it. It's, it's not. It's just basically velocity. Uh, these are components of velocity um, in a particular direction. So if we put it in, vector, in a vector kind of form, you might say that the instantaneous velocity is the, is the RDT, that is the instant, instant, instantaneous rate of change in relation to time of the resultant, which is also equal to um, the vector uh, sum of the uh, x component, the y component, and the z uh, component. And because it's on the i, j, k, all that means is I'm talking about uh, the change of distance in relation to the x-axis, that's the i part or the change of, of distance per time in relation to the y component, which is the j, what the j tells me. The j is a little book, bookmark or footnote that says, this is going in the y direction. Or dz dt, the k tells me that I'm looking at the change in distance per time in relation to the z direction. So that's a, a, a way of writing. It's just another, it's like learning another language. It's another way of writing uh, velocity in terms of its components, its vector components, the i being the x component, the j uh, being the y component, and the k being the z component. Oh, now we get into a little math. Uh, this is basically, uh, what if I want to find out um, what, let's say that I only know the velocity components. Let's say I don't know the, the magnitude of the final resultant uh, velocity. How do I find the magnitude of the velocity if I only know the components of the velocity. I only know the, let's say I only know the x component, the y component, and the z component of the velocity. How do I find the magnitude of the, of the overall uh, velocity? Well, I use Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is basically a slightly more complicated version of this. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the resultant squared. Um, or in this case, the, the x component of the velocity squared plus the y component of the velocity squared plus the z component of the velocity squared equals, if I take the square root of that, that's going to give me the resultant magnitude of the velocity. It's just a b. It's just a Pythagorean theorem. Um, so if I have a velocity going in this direction, and I know the x component of the velocity and the y component of the velocity, uh, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the velocity x squared plus the velocity y squared uh, equals the overall velocity squared. So if I take the square root of the sum of these two, I'm going to get the length, the, 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 the resultant uh, velocity. Again, uh, you can see this, review this. Um, uh, well, I'm not sure if I do the Pythagorean part in chapter two, but um, it's, it's, this is basic geometry. Now, um, what, how do I locate this, though, in terms of direction? Well, I might want to know what this angle is. You know, what angle is it at? And let's just talk two dimensions here. Let's say it's an xy kind of thing. And I want to know what, the, what angle um, this velocity is going in relation to, you know, a, a framework. Whatever framework I've set up, 
and I want to know what angle this velocity is going at. So I'm going to use a little uh, uh, a trigonometry, if you remember. So in trigonometry, when you have a right triangle, the opposite side divided by the adjacent side of a right triangle is called the tangent. So the tangent of this angle equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Well, we can do that with velocity as well. So the tangent of, of this angle, let's call it um, alpha, uh, and I put x, y there since we're only talking two dimensions here. So the tangent of this angle is going to equal the velocity component, the y component, divided by the velocity component of the x component. So to find that angle, all I do is I take, if I, if I, have, if I have the y component and I have the x component, so I divide the y component by the x component, and then I take the arc tangent, the inverse tangent uh, of that, and I will get it'll give me what that angle is uh, on my calculator. So, and of course, if it was if there was a z component, you'd have to, there, there'd be not only that angle, but you'd have another angle out um, that you'd have to find. But you'd use the same basic trigonometric principles uh, to find that other angle um, as well. So there you have it. Uh, again. Uh, if, if at some point you went, ooh, I'm not getting this, um, chances are you still got enough to be able to survive uh, this section of the chapter. Not hard. This is not hard. All we're doing is we're taking the principles of chapter 2 and locating velocity and position in, in relation to some three-dimensional uh, framework, whereas in the previous chapter we were only doing it in relation to one dimension. Uh, so onward and upward, the next video has to do with acceleration uh, in more than uh, one dimension, and it's simply going to be an extension of what we've done in this video.